Thank you, Thank so, you much, so much, Caroline. Caroline. We got a little got feedback, feedback there. there. All, right. All right. Good morning. Good morning. It's, early, it's early, I'm sure, sure for some of you, some of you but, we but we are volunteers, volunteers from the League of Women Voters of Greater Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh and we are we very, very happy, happy to be part, part of Civic Action, Action Week. Week. This is my, my friend, friend co and colleague, colleague Joanne, Joanne, and today, today we are going to talk about some big ideas, and then we will get very specific. So, so these, these are, are some of the, the phrases, phrases, some of the um, messages, messages of the League of, of the League of Women Voters, voters. And, and empowering, empowering voters, voters and defending democracy, democracy is the battle cry of the, of the, of the League. League. While, these While these messages, messages are, linked are linked together, together they're, they're also, also very... Promise. One of my favorite people, no longer with us, was a trailblazer, Congresswoman Barbara Jordan from Texas. She was in the U.S. Congress from 1973 to 79, and she said, what the people want is very simple. They want an America as good as its promise. What do you see as the promise of America? And what does, it, what does that phrase mean to you? Do you have a picture in your head? Caroline, are we okay?
Should I keep Should I going? Keep going? Keep going. Keep going. Okay. okay. So, so my question, my question to, you to you and to you at home is, is what do what you do see, see as the promise of democracy? democracy? Do you have a picture in your head of what our democracy should be like? Any takers there, Caroline? Okay. Go ahead to the next. Our league members. Welfare. Welfare. Education. So I'm going to walk through this infographic. Perhaps the critical together, together who are people that. Gets, this, this position would get communicated throughout the league. At that, At that point, point, people could take action. And if all else fails, there's litigation. And I'm going to tell you more about that in a minute. And again, I'm going to say it again. We are nonpartisan when we take a position after study and consensus. And we do not support individual candidates or political parties, but we do take positions on important civic and political issues of the day. And we turn, and we turn our, positions our positions into advocacy, advocacy and, action. and action. And we're not we're for not women for only. Women our league is open to any member 16 years old and older who's aligned with our mission. mission. We also we conduct also voter drives. drives. We, host we host public, public forums, forums and debates. And debates. We provide information for citizens to raise their civic IQs. We welcome new citizens at naturalization ceremonies with the opportunity to register to vote. And we're trying to start a student chapter. Uh, we, uh, want we want a student, a student program, program so that, so that young, people young people can plug into, plug into our, our incredible resources and our, and our institutional knowledge. knowledge. We're, also We're also completely committed to diversity, diversity equity, equity, and inclusion. And as you, and see, as you this see this big, big idea, idea at the, po at the bottom, bottom um, and we're committed, committed in principle and practice, practice so that we can create a more, a more perfect, perfect democracy. democracy. There's so There's many so grassroots that one. There's so, there many, so many grassroots, grassroots um, organizations, organizations out there, out there. but the League, the League of Women, of Women Voters, Voters was a grassroots, grassroots bottom-up bottom organization, organization from the very, very beginning. beginning. Go ahead. Next one. 
This chart, this chart broadly, broadly displays the flow, the flow of study, study to positions, positions and, then and then to advocacy, advocacy and, action. and action. And this is, and this I'll, is tell I'll tell you a little bit about the, about the approval process. process. There's, always There's always one or multiple layers, layers of approval by an entire body of league members who vote before, before a position is adopted. And this cycle, and this cycle usually, usually begins at the local level, level and once and members are fully informed, is voted, is voted on during, on during an during annual meeting, meeting of all the of members of that local, local league. league. Our, our, our local, local league has over 300 members. members. Then, the then the position proceeds to the state, state or national, national level, level to a convention. convention. Every, other Every other year, year there's, there's a state, state or national, national convention, convention where, additional where additional approval is needed. Is needed. State, state leagues can adopt, adopt positions from other leagues in any state. And sometimes a local league wants to just study an issue that already has a position. And that, and that goal, goal is to move, to move from study, from study of a local, local issue, issue to advocacy, advocacy and specific recommended, recommended action. And if you, and go, if you go, go to our, our website, website at lwvpgh.org and click on the positions, positions page, page, you'll see, you'll that, see that we did a study, study in 2014 for two years, two years on gun safety, gun safety in a civil society. society. So from so your from understanding, understanding, I'm gonna I'm pick gonna on Caroline, of dialogue and deliberation. Are there elements that are, that are similar, similar to our to study, study consensus, consensus process, process to, dialogue to dialogue and deliberation? Do you see elements that are the similar, similar different? different? What's, what's, uh, what's, your, what's your feeling on that? Very cool. Very cool. So, so the, the, the origin, origin of the problem, problem is from the community, from the community and, it and it moves to the, to the group who then works, works on, on it together. together. Awesome. awesome. That's terrific. That's terrific. So the role, so the role of the local, local leagues, leagues, in a way, in a way does, does this. this. Um, they, um, they, they monitor they what's going on in the community. community. The eyes the and ears eyes to work to make better, better communities, communities. Monitoring the laws, laws that might be affecting local, local um, communities. communities. They could they be could national. Be national um, our national, our league, national deals league deals with congressional issues. issues. Our, state our state league deals, deals with state and Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania government issues. And our local league then kind of you know looks and sees what's affecting our community right now close, to, close home, to home, but they're, but they're also, also impacted by state and national laws. laws. So, again, so again, this is more information, more information about how we do advocacy. advocacy. Our, our Legal, Legal Women, Women Voters, Voters US has action, action alerts, alerts, and they, and send, they send them, them to, you to you and let and you, um, you, know, respond you know, respond right away with an email to your legislatures. And I'll and tell you a little bit about the legal part of our organization. Talks with legislatures lately, lately and, and of course, we, we, we hope, hope everyone, everyone writes, writes and emails, emails and calls. And, and the priorities right now are, 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 are and the fair, fair district, if you've not heard of fair district, they're totally involved in the redistricting and reapportionment issue. They've attended the hearing. And if you go on that website at fairdistrictspa.com, you will have a wealth of information. 
about redistricting reform, judicial gerrymandering, where they want to, this is probably going to come next year. They want to make the appellate election, appellate judges election regional, which we feel would insert a more political process into that. We are we concerned, concerned about election, about election law, 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 law right now and, now and the, the way they're changing, changing election laws, laws and, vote, vote, and voting vote, rights, rights and of course, and voter, voter access. access. So we've, so discussed, we've the discussed the process, process of civic, of civic action, action a little bit. And so, so I just so want to talk, talk a, a bit about, about why we should get involved. Get involved. This is this how is the how National Conference of State Legislatures sees our obligations and responsibilities of being a citizen. Anything, Anything you'd, you'd add, add to that, to that Caroline? Caroline? Are we projecting, Are we projecting here? here? Okay. 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 So this so is, is these are the these obligations, are the obligations um, that, that citizens, citizens are supposed to have. To have. Um, and, um, I would, and I would, I would, I would tell, tell you about, about, about Joanne, Joanne and, and I, I, our experience, our experience when, we when we were college, college students, students in the 70s. 70s. And, and our participation, our participation in, peaceful in peaceful protests of the Vietnam, Vietnam War, War that led that to the 26th, 26th Amendment, Amendment changing the voting age, age from 21, 21 to 18 years, years old. Um, uh, we, have we have friends and family, and family who were, who were whose lives, lives were seriously were disrupted, disrupted by the Vietnam, Vietnam War. War. Uh, 18, uh, 18 years, years old, old, and they went and right to rice paddies in Vietnam. So needless to say, our battle cry then was old enough to be drafted, but not old enough to vote. And our and peers', our peers advocacy, advocacy and action to lower the voting age from citizens active involvement and i would say what level of concern do you have on a scale of one to five about the voting laws that are being changed Right. So one to five, how important do you think this issue is? Five. <laughs> we do too. House on fire, number five. That's how we feel. A little history. So these folks pushed back against voter suppression. And the, the bottom line is it's still happening today. They were not cynical or skeptical. They were determined. And they overcame barriers from those who would suppress their vote. And if you think your vote doesn't matter, well, it did to these folks who had to fight to have their voices heard. Hopefully through history, you know about the extreme struggles of different groups of people to vote. The women's suffrage, it took 70 years of fighting to get women's suffrage across the, the country in 1920. Half the population couldn't vote until 1920. There's been disenfranchisement of people of color despite the 15th Amendment. John Lewis and 600 civil rights marchers tried to cross the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma in 1965. And it's called Bloody Sunday because they were attacked, these peaceful marchers, but it led to outrage that also led to the Voting Rights Act of 1965. However, continuing history in America, in 2013, key provisions of the Voting Act of 1965 were reversed by the Supreme Court in Shelby versus Holder. And the heart of the Voting Rights Act was basically struck down, freeing nine states to change election laws without advanced federal approval. The court declared racial inequality was a thing of the past. But, you know, we're here to show you that there's other, this, this one picture of people pounding on the windows for me is iconic in 1920. In Kentucky primary, they were supposed to keep the polling place open till nine in the evening. They shut the doors at six 
There were people all lined up. They shut the doors at six. So that doesn't sound like it could happen in America, right? And then in Florida, the um, returning citizens who were ex-felons by a super majority in the Florida's primary, 60% of the population agreed they should have the right to vote restored once their feet hit the street. However, the state legislature, rather the Florida Supreme Court, ruled for the state legislature that wrote a law to limit their ability to vote based on their payment of fees and, and fines. So just to sum it up, all eyes are on the restrictive laws that are being passed across the country. I can give you an example of some states, but Pennsylvania is kind of in there right now. And so it not only, some of these laws not only seem to limit voter access, but also seem to nullify the choices that voters already make, giving state legislatures the power to overturn election results in the name of election security. So it's happening now. And all we would say to you is monitor, read, read up on things that are happening. Uh, the House Select Committee has lots of information going on when they're investigating the January 6th insurrection. And um, I know that we're bombarded with information, but some information is important to have. So it seems that citizens must continually work to realize the promise of democracy. I love this quote by Kofi Annan. And he says, young people must be included from birth. So Caroline, putting you on the spot again, what do you personally feel is an obligation to you, Ob an obligation or a responsibility for democracy to our democracy. Awesome. So to be engaged, to vote, to be informed, figure out what's going on. That's fabulous. For the first time, and I'm old, I'm going to be a poll worker. I signed up, COVID delayed my signing up, but I'm going to give it a try. And we like to say that being a citizen is a gift and a duty um, because there's nothing that stops you from participating in this country. And um, go ahead and do the next one. We, this is an activity that we, that we have, but um, I want, well, I could put Caroline on the spot again, but we'd like to, you to think about what issues you care about the most. And pick two or three, it's hard to pick them, but pick two or three that you think are most important to you. And then if you could ask the older people in your life, what would they say their issues are? Are they different or are they the same? And hopefully you know that in 2020, 75% of eligible young people 18 to 24 registered to vote. 75%. That Incredible number, never seen before. However, how many showed up? Do you know the number, Caroline, how many actually voted? 51.4%. So we lost a good chunk of that wonderful population of voters who could make a difference in this country. So I, we plea, we send out pleas that not only registration is important, register to vote, but boy, get your friends to get to, get, to, get to the polls grab your friends and do all you can to get to the polls. And then the oldest people you know, about probably most of them are registered to vote, about 80 to 90% of older folks. By the time they're old like us, they're registered to vote. And how many show up? Here's the difference. 76% showed up in 2020, but these are the voters that vote in every single election. They're super voters. And some of these elections, Joanne's going to talk about the municipal elections the, the, are the most important, the primaries. We had constitutional amendments pass in the primaries, and it went unnoticed by many, many voters. So who are the officials listening to? Probably not the young people, which is a shame, because we are high on young people. So advocacy works, especially when young people lead. And these are examples we led in, two, in, the 19, in 1971 to get that voting rights, uh, the voting age changed. In 2018 and 2020, young people helped elect the youngest and most diverse House of Representatives. And young people are advocating all over the world for gun safety, for climate change, and for 
and I'm putting the spotlight on institutional in inequalities in our country in all areas of life. So I just wanna say, as I sum up my half, you matter, your voice matters, your vote matters, but also all of the other ways that you might participate and engage in our, in our democracy matters. So we've shown you a big picture of adv advocacy in action. So now we're gonna zoom in and talk specifics. Okay, Joanne. That's why we switch. That's why we switch. Now, how do you make this? Uh, yeah, I'm using it. Okay. Oh, well, we're a machine here. We're good. Okay, so what we'd like to do now, um, as Amy said, is kind of zoom in a little bit uh, on how you can become uh, a citizen activist. Um, we hope that your citizenship journey will move you from a skeptic, someone that's you know kind of thinking about it and you know what's important to me and what am I going to get involved in, to someone who will become a citizen activist. And this infographic that's on your screen, the nine ways to be an active citizen, um, we're gonna send that along to you to make sure um, that you have access to this. Um, it, we're gonna send you a PDF of everything that we have. Uh, and so that you will have access to all of our library uh, at the League of Women Voters uh, PGH, because we have a tremendous resources and we want to avail, uh, make those available to you. And we have hot links to vote.pa.gov. We've got um, how to contact your elected official. We have a brand new one on how to find, uh, you know, how to find a, a candidate that you like. Most importantly, we have one about factor fiction. And that infographic is so important because we really encourage you to do your research. But hopefully at this phase, how do you know what's real and what isn't? Especially, uh, you know, when we are so dependent on what's out there uh, on the internet, we are all looking at social media and how can you tell what's real and what isn't? So we really, we want to give you those resources that can help you uh, in your citizenship journey. And as we said, hit our website, it is an ever, ever evolving source of information that we believe can be very, very helpful to you. Um, the first way that you can become an active citizen is of course to vote. Um, we say that you never own your citizenship more or participate in our democracy more valuably than when you vote in every election, local, state, or federal. Now, hopefully um, you guys are registered. Uh, if you are not, we are going to encourage you to please register to vote. We, um, especially in a university setting, we really recommend turbovote.org. Um, we know you, there are people here from all across the country. Turbovote is a national site. It will get you to your local, your, to your states, um, uh, registration website. It is a tremendous resource. TurboVote will also send you texts or emails uh, to remind you that, um, you know, election is coming up. I got started getting mine uh, on Tuesday just to say, your election's coming up November 2nd. Are you ready? Have you done your research? TurboVote does not sell your data. They don't do anything like that. They are highly respected. They are nonpartisan, which is very important uh, to the League of Women Voters you are going to get. They don't care. Like us, they just want you to register to vote and then to go ahead and vote. Um, locally, uh, November 2nd is the next election here in Allegheny County. Um, and it is a municipal or a local election. And um, I hope that if you know you are local that you will indeed be voting uh, in this election because there are many, many, many positions up for election. Um, there are judges all across our county and state that are uh, seeking election. Really needs to, you really need to take a look 
uh, at that. The city of Pittsburgh uh, mayor is up for election, very, very important. In Allegheny County, uh, half of the county council is up for election. The county sheriff is up for election. And across the county, school boards are up for election. And quite frankly, um, you know, in the last 20 months, who has impacted your life more than your school board? Absolutely essential positions that have just really come into their own uh, through the uh, pandemic. And so it's very important to take a look at what's going on locally. Um, sadly, sadly, these municipal elections, they don't have that cachet that um, the larger elections, the midterms or the big federal elections like we had in 2020 have. And sadly, they don't get the response. A response in a municipal election can be as low as 20%, 20%. How are we being fairly represented if only 20% of people are showing up to vote in an election that impacts us the most? So truly, um, we really encourage you to, uh, to vote in your municipal elections. Hit turbo vote. Uh, if you haven't um, registered, that'll get you where you need to go. And um, Pennsylvania, vote.pa.gov, um, that will absolutely, um, you know, get you there. And we'd like you to think, of, you know, a minute, um, you know, if voting is important to you, you know, a way to be an active citizen, how can you encourage your classmates? How can you encourage your dorm mates? How can you, you know, encourage others to register to vote as well, something that can help you. You know, second thing to do is do the research. Um, you know what's important to you. So source your information. Um, we'd like to really promote vote411.org. Um, it is part of the League of Women Voters website. It is managed by the League. Um, we send out a questionnaire, uh, three questions to candidates. And if they respond, we post um, the response up uh, on our website. And you can see how various candidates are responding to questions. It's a great way to do a quick look um, at some of uh, the, the answers to uh, your uh, to possible candidates. Um, you can also create a cheat sheet, if you will, uh, of your candidate choices by doing a customized ballot list. And that can just help you, it can be emailed to you. Um, and it's again on the website, make the most of vote 411. And um, it's just, it's really helpful for you to get your information organized. There are other tremendous resources out there and you guys know this. The, that internet thing is really catching on, you know? And so there are so many places for you to go to get good information. We like pacivics.org, the National Constitution Center, the Annenberg Classroom, and iCivics, just to name a few. Um, we also encourage you to do a deeper dive into candidates, especially on the issues that are important to you. Um, if your animal welfare is something that's very important to me, I look and I'd like to see how do people, how have candidates, you know, responded to questions? Have they responded to questions? Do they have a pet at home? Things as simple as that can help tell you a little bit more about the candidates. Do that deeper dive. The information is out there and you can get to it. Um, we also, you know, you're to a more active citizen, get involved. We know that as students, you guys have a ton of things going on and, and, and we certainly understand that, but we encourage you to get involved. Um, as Amy said, she's gonna be a poll worker for the first time. And there is a great need in Allegheny County for poll workers. There's training for it. And um, a poll worker, literally you would work the polls on November 2nd. It is a paid gig. Um, training is also paid. Um, so if you're uh, available and considering it, um, please go to AlleghenyCounty.us and there's a whole thing about how to be a poll worker, something that really will get you uh, involved. Um, we know that that's needed for 
uh, November of 2021, our municipal, our local election, but also you know, getting involved in what's going to be coming up in 2022. Um, we will have a spring primary, and then in the fall, we will have a very high profile midterm election. And um, I think, you know, all eyes were on the state of Pennsylvania out of uh, the 2020 election. And we believe that those eyes will continue to be on our state. Um, our governorship will be up. Uh, we have a Senate seat that will be up. And um, there's a lot, a lot of pressure and a lot of uh, eyes following what is happening. And there are ways for you to get involved um, that might not necessarily take a lot of your time, maybe just a little bit. Um, because we, there probably has never been a more consequential midterm than the one we are facing in 2022, following the scrutiny and turmoil of the aftermath of the 2020 election. So truly, um, the, we ask you to really consider ways of getting involved. Um, you know, there are just all kinds of ways. You can do postcards. You can... Um, you can, you know, phone bank, you can do a variety of different things, get involved where you can. And, you know, we, we talked about what matters to you. You know, what are those issues that are important to you? And um, a great way to build connections to your school and your community is to find an organization on or off campus that supports your views, your passions and your interests and get involved, no matter what side you're on. If it's important to you, get involved. Um, once you know your, the direction of your advocacy, um, you know, how, how do you think, uh, you know, just reflect on that a little bit. How do you become an effective citizen advocate? You know, if you've got your issue, can you become an effective citizen advocate for it? There are a variety of ways of doing it. One of the things um, that we want you to consider along those lines, um, these are some ideas from the Business Insider, uh, the psychology of persuasion, you know, how to involve, how to get your advocacy language together. And um, this is really very important, you know, these issues of being confident, Introduce a logical argument. Find out what the other party cares about. Make the points that are beneficial to the other party. Choose your words carefully. Use flattery. Be patient but persistent. Take care not to bully or manip manipulate the other party. Um, Caroline, we'll put the bite on you. Um, you know, are there, uh, have there, are there organizations are on campus that do this persuasive argument? Are there ways of, have, have you seen? Good, good. Yeah, that dialogue is so very, very important. And getting those words, um, you know, is, is, is very important. And I'll just share a little from my own experience. Um, I got involved in animal welfare in 1997 when the no kill movement in the animal shelters was just getting started. Uh, and, you know, where they didn't want to euthanize animals just because they were strays and coming in off the street. And the campaign was to show very graphic and vivid pictures of piles of deceased animal bodies. And that was intended to motivate people and to get them going. And the bottom line was it failed miserably. It did not work. Uh, people were turned off by it. And so, you know, a whole new strategy had, had to come together. And now the no-kill movement has moved right across the country. Um, and so that's a, a, a wonderful thing. So, you, you know, getting that dialogue together and right um, is so very, very important. You know, and when you find what's important to you, you know, turning that advocacy into action 
Um, we want you to you know, encourage you to um, you know, contact your local, state, and national elected officials. You, you guys, your age group, you have more tools for communication than any other generation prior to. Use them, use them. You can get involved in so many different ways and you don't even have to leave the comfort of your desk. You can, you know, doing everything online and, and social media, you can, you know, get involved, um, you know, go to a rally. You can donate money if that's possible. You can support or oppose an issue. Join with a community ally. You know, if there is, if there is an organization in town that really works and supports what you do, join that community ally. Sign petitions, easy to do. Write a letter, easy to do. Um, you, know, you know, post accurate information on social media. Very, very easy to do. Call, write, email, all of those things. We really encourage you to do. Another way of your, for your citizenship um, is to volunteer. Um, Carolyn, have you had any volunteer experiences? Have you, did you have to prior to coming to Pitt or? Okay, what did you do? Okay. Uh, I don't know how many times I've heard you say community in that. And that, that's, that, that's what's so essential to volunteering is you learn about your community. You learn the issues of your community. You learn what, you know, the importance of the food bank. You learn the importance of, you know, so many different things within your community. The arts, the library, you know, all kinds of things. You find that out through volunteering. And then, you know, <laughs> what you can do and, and how you can help and improve your community. Um, we also encourage you to join a political party. You know, it's understandable that as new voters, you may not want to join a political party. I know way back in the 70s, uh, when I was first registering, I didn't want to do that. I thought it was cool to be an independent from Maryland. Um, but we know um, what we have since learned, especially here in Pennsylvania, um, that uh, about 1.2 million registered voters are left out of the primary process because Pennsylvania has a closed primary. And that means only Republicans can vote for Republicans in the primary. Democrats can only vote for Democrats. Pennsylvania does not have a recognized independent party. So independents are completely left out. Uh, and so 1.2 million voters are left out of the process that selects the candidates. And that is a huge thing to miss out on. Um, we want to remind you that in Pennsylvania, it is also very easy to change your voter, uh, your, your party affiliation. You are not stuck with it your entire life by any stretch. Vote.pa.gov, you go in, you change it. It's as simple as that. You know, ultimately, you know, the greatest way perhaps of, of, of getting involved is to run for office. Um, one of our team members has run tw twice for state representative. She hasn't been successful yet, but she is certainly, certainly putting it out there and, uh, and trying her very best to serve the community. And, um, you know, something that we just want you to think about, um, you know, it's a statement, um, once a politician gets elected, they become a civil servant. What do you think about that? You know, does that distinction still have relevance today? I can tell you I was born and raised in Washington, DC, where literally almost everybody works for the federal government and you are a civil servant. There is no politician job description. You are a civil servant. And think about it, is that what we're seeing today? Okay, so we summed up, we zoomed in, gave you some specifics. We also talked about some big issues, some big ideas, and, and about our process where we went from study 
our group from study to positions to advocacy and then to action and how that compares a little bit to the uh, the process you all have been studying this week. Um, we are located here on our website, lwvpgh.org. We have a Gen Z page where you can take a poll and see where you stand on the political spectrum. We try to be as nonpartisan and neutral as possible when we talk to folks because you are entitled to your own opinions and we are here just to help you find the information to form those opinions. The League of Women Voters is there and um, um, the Pennsylvania League websites, our, our bar here keeps covering up important things, but that says democracy is not a spectator sport. It was never meant to be, um, our democracy doesn't get stronger by everyone sitting on the sidelines. We all need to get involved. We hope we've helped you understand that the stakes are high right now. There's threats to our democracy that we perceive as the promise of democracy. And we hope that you will be part of the generation that gets our country, keeps our country on track and keeps our country um, becoming what the founders envisioned, the promise of our democracy. Um, so thank you for including us today. If there's any questions, if anyone's on, online and there's any questions we can answer or any comments, we'll be happy to do that. We have one more page for you. Okay, great. So it's that combination of education and, and advocacy, which also includes our, our litigation branch. You know, when we explained how civil, we believe civil rights are being uh, compromised by some of the laws that are happening here in Pennsylvania, our, our league takes action with their core of we have lobbyists and we also have um, litigators, we have attorneys. And that's at the national level and at the state level. Um, but our part here locally and specifically my team, which is, includes, there's eight of us that are actively involved in civic education because we feel in Pennsylvania, um, it's woefully lacking, not just the kids, but, but adults. Um, when we have legislators who go into, hair, into, this, into the Congress and don't know the three branches of government, you know, we're kind of in trouble. So we feel like our constant job is raising civic, we call civic IQ. We put out lots of information from our website. And as I said, we have this voter resource library you can go to and find a whole lot of really great um, infographics and other documents that explain our government. We have, a, we have three new pages on our website, Harrisburg Watch, Elections in Pennsylvania, and Understanding the PA Courts. And those are like mini lessons in themselves. So they're under our advocacy tab in our website. So any poli sci majors out there, you could uh, maybe have some good background information. So and, and just to, I'm sorry, just no, to, to add on to that, um, if there is concern on voting day about you know what 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 actions are taken, um, one of the infographics um, that we have clearly outlines what you can expect, what is legal and what isn't. And intimidation and all of those kinds of things are not legal. And there are, and the infographic explains the number to call and you know all of those things are in place so that voters can safely feel that you know they can go to the polls, they can send in their mail-in ballot, all of those kinds of things. Um, you know, as long as you know there are guidelines and there are people there to oversee and make sure that those guidelines are enforced. Yeah, that infographic is called Know Your Rights. And also on votepa.gov, there's a great section on understanding your voting rights. So that's also a good resource. Anything else? Thank you. 
Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Good luck to everyone. Yes,